The first guidance that I would offer white people is to work to answer the question, what does it mean to be white? In some ways that may seem like a simple question, but I've been asking my fellow white people and myself that question for 25 years, and consistently white people have very patterned responses to it. And the first response is discomfort, and the second is an inability to think critically about that question. And if you can't answer what it means to be white, you cannot hold what it means not to be white. Our inability to think critically about how our own race shapes us is not benign, and it's not neutral, and it's not innocent. The collective impact of the white majority not being able to answer that question, how race shapes our lives, collectively creates an environment that is hostile and unsupportive to people of color. Because people of color working and living in primarily white environments know that most white people can't answer that question. And that means they can't bring their authentic selves. They can't talk to us about what they're experiencing. They can't give us feedback about what they're experiencing from us for several reasons. One, I'm going to have no critical awareness to engage in the conversation. I'm going to have no skills in navigating that conversation. And I'm going to likely have no emotional capacity to withstand the discomfort of that conversation. And that means that people of color endure countless daily slights and indignities, mostly unaware and unintentional, but harmful nonetheless. And they endure those and take them home because their consistent experience is that things are going to get worse for them if they try to talk to us about it rather than better. So the very first thing we need to do is begin to unpack how race shapes our lives. You know, we're raised to think about race as what they have. And if we're going to be talking about race, we expect we'll be talking about their race. And we have to start putting the lens on ourselves. And that is a lifelong process. The second guidance I would offer my fellow white people is to change what you understand it means to be racist. The mainstream teaches us that a racist is an individual who consciously doesn't like people based on race, apparently has to be conscious in order to count, and intentionally seeks to be mean to them. Also apparently needs to be intentional in order to count. So individual, conscious, malintent across race. And I don't know that you could have come up with a more effective way to protect the system of racism. Because if that's what I think it means to be racist, and you suggest that anything I've said or done is racially problematic, that I'm making an assumption that comes from a racist framework, much less that I benefit and collude with the system of racism just by being white, what I'm going to hear you saying is that I am a morally wrong and bad person. And now I'm going to have to defend my moral character. I think that simplistic definition of what it means to be racist is the root of virtually all white defensiveness on this topic. And it's actually incredibly liberating to just start from the premise that of course you've absorbed a racist worldview. You're swimming in racist water. You live in a society in which racism is embedded in all institutions and in policies and practices and norms and language, and of course you've absorbed it. And so you can just stop defending, deflecting, denying, uh, hoping nobody will notice, explaining, minimizing, and get to work aligning what you profess to value with the actual action of your life. It's liberating, I, I cannot convey that enough. And most of white fragility that we're encountering is coming from this idea that to suggest that one has been impacted by racism is to suggest that one is an intentionally mean person across race. That's easier said than done because it's so deep inside our psyches that that's what it means to be racist. But that is what we have to constantly work on, changing what you understand it means. We cannot get where we need to go from the dominant paradigm that says only the Richard Spencers of the world. Only neo-Nazis could ever be racist. We have to stop saying things like, I don't have a racist bone in my body, which is absurd if you have any self-awareness or self-knowledge. The last 
guidance I would offer is humility coupled with accountability. I will never be free of my racist conditioning. So let me just be really clear. As a result of being raised as a white person in this society, I have a racist worldview. I have racist biases. I have investments in a system that has served me and that is comfortable and that has helped me overcome barriers that I do face. I'm not saying white people don't face barriers, but we don't face that one. And not facing that one impacts how we navigate the barriers that we do face. And I also have an investment in not seeing it with that. But what it would suggest to me about my identity as a good moral person, if I can't move past this idea that only mean, intentional people could be racist. And I also have an investment in not seeing that because what it would actually require of me in practice, and it would require much more than smiling and niceness. It would require much more than fond regard. There's so many of us who are white think that if there's fond regard across race, there can't be racism. And this is why we invoke all our friends. I have men in my life who have fond regard for me, and on occasion they reveal a sexist worldview rooted in patriarchy. How could they not? Again, we can be in relationship and still perpetrate problematic behaviors on occasion. And so we have to have humility, ongoing humility about the necessary limits of our understanding. And we cannot use our own self-image to certify ourselves as free of racism and good to go. I am the least qualified to determine how well I'm doing. I don't call myself an ally. I don't call myself an anti-racist and I don't walk around feeling woke because the moment I do, I'm complacent, I'm arrogant, and I'm likely to be highly defensive at any suggestion that I may not be quite as woke as I think that I am. It's for people of color to decide how well I'm doing and how do I know what their determination is. Am I in accountable relationships? And I want to be really clear, having a friend of color, being married to somebody of color, having nieces and nephews of color, working in a diverse workplace is not accountability. Accountability practices include donating a percentage of your income to racial justice causes led by people of color, having a clearly defined relationships across race, where you pay people of color to give you feedback or to engage in these conversations. And you don't just assume that they are there to do all that emotional work and all that heavy lifting. That is a piece of the conversation you have with people you're seeking to have accountability relationships with. And you have white people in your life who have a strong analysis and who will lovingly hold you accountable. And then you build your capacity to notice your own behaviors and practices. And when you put all those three things together, relationships with people of color, strong relationships with white people who will challenge you, and ongoing, continual struggling and grappling and educating yourself, you're going to have a much more accountable relationships. But just kind of assuming smiling and niceness is all you need is not going to cut it.